Good morning. morning. And a very warm welcome to the worship of God this morning, to all of you here in church and all of you watching at home as well. And a special welcome to any visitors that we have with us today. We will have tea and coffee after the service as usual through in the big hall, so please join us if you can for that extended time of fellowship. Next Sunday, our services will be at 9.45 in Teviot and 11.15 at St. Mary's. The prayer meeting is on Thursday evening at 7.30 p.m., so please join for that if you can. Um, And if you need a link to that, um, you can ask Alistair and he will get that sorted out for you. And I would like just to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to everyone for all of your lovely, kind support and uh, patience and love that you've shown um, over the last sort of six or seven months. Um, I really have appreciated it and especially for everything that Sheila and Alistair have done um, in support with my training. So a big thank you to all of you. Our call to worship this morning is Matthew chapter 3, and it's verse, three, uh, verse 13 to 17, so I'm just going to read this to you. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to ba- be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Our opening song of praise this morning is Lift Up Your Heads to the Coming King. So please stand if you can. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the light and the glory that shines upon us. 
You are the path to righteousness, the Holy One, free from sin. We are in awe of your power and glory and ever thankful for your presence as you work in and through our lives. Your creation shows us your wonderful work, your power and beauty in all things. You are the pure delight that fills our hearts with joy. Lord Jesus, only you have the authority to cleanse and heal, and your wonderful works is beyond anything we as humans can comprehend. No task is too big for you. Nothing is beyond the realms of your capability. You make the impossible possible. Lord, we are so blessed for every day you give to us. We rejoice with gladness in our hearts for all that you are and all that you do. Lord Jesus, you came humbly to this earth to save and redeem us. You took on all our pain and suffering, helping those who were poor, sick and in need. You restored and cleansed them with your healing hands. We are in awe of everything you do. You are the Holy One and your glory and splendor shines brightly. Lord, you are our radiant King of light and we bow down to you, we love you, we worship you. Forgive us, Lord, when we lose sight of what it means to follow you, when we are distracted in our own busyness and take our eyes off you. Forgive our careless ways and disobedience and discipleship. Forgive us, Lord, when we lose sight of your love and when we do not offer you the praise <clears throat> and the praise you deserve for being wonderful, worthy, and full of grace and mercy, or when we don't always show compassion and love to others. Let us take a moment and in the silence, bring before the Lord any sins we are harboring or anything we are particularly seeking forgiveness for. We remember, Lord, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and to purify us of all unrighteousness. Father, we ask that you bless us as we gather this morning for fellowship. May we know your presence and blessing upon the worship through preaching, praise songs, and prayers. Let us now join our voices together to say the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would now like to invite Sandy to come forward to do our Bible reading. Our reading this morning is from Isaiah at chapter 42, which can be found on page 728 of the Pew Bible. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says. The creator of the heavens who stretches them out, 
who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives a breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Amen. Thank you for that, Sandy. Our next hymn is Meekness and Majesty. So this morning we are going to look at the passage from Isaiah, which is 42, yeah, chapter 42, verse 1 to 9. And this is known as the first servant song. 
Last week, Alistair was looking at Isaiah chapter 40, which was all about comfort and consolation for God's people, as well as pointing forward towards the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. There are four servant songs in the book of Isaiah, and today we will be focusing on the first of these. These songs describe the service, suffering, and the exaltation of the servant of the Lord, the Messiah. All four songs show Jesus to be God's meek and gentle servant. Isaiah is prophesizing here that this servant of the Lord would deliver the world from the prison of sin. This was a mission that Israel could not fulfill. They were deaf and blind and in need of God's forgiveness. Israel failed time and time again. They disobeyed and disappointed God. In contrast, God's servant would come, the Messiah, to faithfully complete his mission and fulfill God's purpose, glorifying him. If we look firstly at verses one to four of this passage, verses one to four describes the character of the servant. The opening verse, here is my servant whom I'm uphold, shows God depending on the son, trusting him to fulfill his purposes. My chosen one in whom my soul delights. Jesus is the ultimate chosen one. This is a picture of love and approval. God's soul delights in us too when we put our faith and trust in him. I will put my spirit on him. From our call to worship, we understand that as soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, heaven was opened, and the spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. This must truly have been the most glorious, beautiful image. And from this we see God's promise came true when he said that his spirit would be upon him. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and this was what enabled him to carry out his ministry. The ministry of the servant, the Messiah, would not be restricted to the Jewish people, but this would extend to other nations to include the Gentiles, bringing justice and righteousness to them. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice. This refers to the gentle, lowly heart and actions of the servant. We know from the writings in the New Testament that Jesus was humble and meek, not loud or overbearing. He did not want to draw attention to himself, nor did he want to dominate others and shout them down. If you think about it, when Jesus healed the man with leprosy, he healed him and he sent him on his way and he warned him saying, see that you don't tell this to anyone. He didn't want the glory. Red Path expresses this meekness of Jesus in such a lovely way and I would just like to read a quote from him. So this is the words of Red Path. Think for a moment about the modesty of God. He is always at work. He guides the sun, the stars, and the universe. He controls every galaxy. He refreshes the earth constantly. But he works so quietly that many people now try to make out there is no God at all. That is the hallmark of reality in service. God's artists do not put their signatures to the pictures they create. His ambassadors do not run after the photographer all the time to get their pictures taken. It is enough that they have borne witness to the Lord. When we do things in efforts to serve the Lord, it could be messy church, it could be Sunday school, it could be lunch club for the community and creating warm welcoming spaces for to invite people in for fellowship, whatever it might be that we that we do in order to serve the Lord, We have to ask ourselves, are we doing it for God? To honor him and glorify him and all his wonderful works? Or are we doing it for ourselves so that we seek the credit and that we receive the glory? God should always be central. He should be the focus of everything that we do. 
It should be that he may be raised up in celebration of his majesty and his splendor. We should be the humble servants working in the background, invisible to all the attention to bring about glory for him. Verse three, a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. This is another reference to the gentleness of Jesus. If we think of a reed, it's quite a fragile plant. It is saying here that even if it is bruised, the delicate, ser- ser- the, and delicate, the servant will handle it so gently with such tender care that it will not break. This reed is very much like our failures and weaknesses. It reflects how the brokenness of humanity. When we are weak and fragile, the servant handles us with such delicate care and love that we are built up again and made strong through him. Often things in life cause us to be bruised. It may be unkindness in the world. It may be burdens and stresses upon us that are just too great to bear. It might be that we are experiencing hurt and pain from the things that challenge and test us. Whatever it is that causes us to be damaged and broken, this verse tells us that Jesus will be there as a humble servant to strengthen us. We see in Ephesians chapter three, verse 16, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Jesus sees the value in a bruised reed, even if no one else can. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. This demonstrates that even if there is no flame, just smoke, the servant won't give up on it and extinguish it. No, he will gently blow on it with his power of the Holy Spirit in him. And he will wait patiently until it becomes a full burning flame. We are all Christians gathered here this morning. We all profess to have faith in the Lord and a passion to follow in his footsteps as we endeavor to live Christ-like lives. Something to reflect upon perhaps and ask ourselves is how brightly does your light burn? Is it a bright light or is it a dim glow? Is it a roaring flame or is it merely a spark? Well, to achieve this roaring flame in our hearts and in our lives, we rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. We depend completely on Jesus. We require spiritual nourishment through prayer, real testimonies, encouragement, fellowship. Jesus, as well as appreciating the beauty and value in the bruised reed, sees that the smoldering wick too is valuable when it is refreshed and nourished. And this is what transforms it, largely from smoke into a burning flame. We as Christians can have this fire ignited when we enrich our prayer lives and strengthen our bonds and fellowship, both to God and with each other. It is through Jesus all this is possible. Jesus never gives up on us. He never leaves us. He wants us to show the same love and compassion to the lowly and the broken. Isaiah tells us that Jesus will bring forth justice and he will not fail nor be discouraged. It is important to understand that although Jesus is gentle, he is not weak. He will do exactly what he says he will and neither failure nor discouragement will get in the way or stop the servant fulfilling his mission and his purpose for God. Jesus holds power and authority and the work of the servant will extend to the ends of the earth. Even those in distant coastlands will serve him. So we've seen in verses one to four, they explain in some depth the character of the servant. Verses five to nine move on to explain the Lord's promise to his servant. So now that we have an insight into the person that Jesus will be and the character traits that he will have, we will now look at the work of Jesus and the reasons why he was sent by the Father. 
Verse six starts with a promise. God promises to hold the servant's hand, which alludes to guidance. We might take the hand of a young child to guide them safely across the road, to protect them from potentially fearful situations of cars coming and going. God is doing the same for Jesus. As his father, he will always be there to guide him and protect him, and he will never leave him. He gives the same promise to us today. As a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, the Messiah would bring salvation, not only to the chosen people of Israel, but also to those deemed beyond salvation, to the Gentiles. Verse seven is specific in what will be required of the servant. He will open the eyes of the blind and free captives from prison. This is giving us an insight into the type of ministry Jesus would experience. This tells us Jesus would carry out miraculous works of healing and restoration, both physically and spiritually. In the New Testament, we read in John chapter nine, that Jesus heals a man that has been blind from birth. Jesus explains the reason that the man was blind was so the works of God could be displayed through him. Further to this, Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. From what Isaiah prophesied, we see come true in the passage of John, that not only would Jesus heal the blind, but he too would be the light to all the nations. We see that both things are fulfilled. And again here we see that Jesus in his meekness did not want everyone to know it was him that had healed the blind man. This shows us God is the master of all things, both past and present. We can have complete confidence and trust in his word, as we know the things stated in the Old Testament come true in the New Testament with the coming of the servant, Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus describes himself as a servant in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. Just as the son of man did not come to be served, be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. This verse in Matthew shows the essential heart of the servant, but it also shows how far this servanthood would go. For Jesus being a servant would go all the way to the cross. To free captives from prison, Jesus had to die. Jesus frees us from the chains that bind us, the things that hold us back, restrict us, cause us to remain in a captive state. These chains may be sickness, they may be sin, but they harm our spiritual growth and deeply affect our relationship with the Lord. Jesus was coming to destroy these chains so we may be liberated. The servant would come to, die, come to break down any barriers that might restrict our freedom and that may prevent us becoming more like Christ and closer to God. The closing verses of this passage echo the theme that we see in both chapter 40 and 41 of Isaiah, and that is, there is no God but the Lord. God makes it very clear that he will not share his glory and his praise with the idols and the false gods. The task of the servant would be to bring divine revelation to the Gentile world to overthrow the unimaginable power these idols had over the hearts and minds of the people. The mission of God was to be fulfilled through the coming of the humble servant, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we draw to a close to summarize, we can see the first half of the servant song was describing the character of Jesus. The second part gives us an insight into the type of ministry that Jesus would experience with carrying out the miracles until ultimately his death on the cross that had to happen to release the prisoners of sin. We can see that everything that Isaiah speaks of here came true and was fulfilled in the New Testament with the coming of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus to this earth 
We thank you for keeping your promises all those years ago and today, that you will hold us in your mighty hands and that you will never leave us. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world and we recognize we are the bruised reeds that are fragile and broken and in desperate need of your help and healing. We cannot thank you enough for the sacrifice you made so we may be freed from the prison of sin, so we may walk in light and not in darkness. We pray, Lord, that we can be faithful and righteous servants to you and that as your disciples, we may spread the good news of the gospel far and wide and that people's hearts may be softened and opened to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our next song is Blessed Be Your Name.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're a God of love, faithfulness, and justice. We are thankful for the relationship we have with you, Lord, and for the sacrifice of your son, the servant, Jesus Christ, paying the price for our sin, redeeming and reconciling us so we may be free from the dungeon of darkness to walk in the light. Father, we are grateful to you for being ever present in our lives. And we know from the promises you have made and kept that you will always be with us, guiding and protecting us. We have the assurance that you will never leave us. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives that renews and transforms us and that in our weakness and brokenness, you hold our hand and strengthen us. As well as dedicating ourselves to you, Lord, to serve and obey you, we also dedicate to you the offering of money so your kingdom may expand and your work may be continued throughout the church. We pray, Lord, for those who are unable to hear your voice when you call them, those unable to see your kindness and mercy. May you remove the hearts of stone from the lost and replace it with a heart that can hear your voice, enabling them to receive your son, Jesus Christ. Let the truth of the gospel prevail over their lives so they may know the extent of your love for them. Lord, as this week marks the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, bringing an end to sectarian violence in Northern Ireland, where so many lost their lives, we pray for continuing reconciliation between all the communities and political leaders, and a day when division may also become a thing of the past. We pray for all those affected by the terrible events and fighting in Sudan, who are experiencing great suffering and loss as a result. We pray for a ceasefire. May there be a cessation of hostilities. And we ask, Lord, that you provide comfort and hope to all those affected. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick or suffering, for those who are on waiting lists, those going through treatments, or those nearing the end of their lives. We ask, Lord, that they and their families may feel your presence with them. We pray for those experiencing relationship issues, marital or friendships, that your mighty hand may be upon them and that fighting and strife may be replaced with reconciliation and love. Lord, we pray for all those who are bereaved or grieving, particularly the family of Jimmy Nicol, who passed away last week, aged 101. We hold before you his son, Bruce, daughter-in-law, Jeanette, and the wider family. We also ask, Lord, that you are with all those who are approaching an anniversary of a death of a loved one. And we think especially of Kathy Anderson and the family. May you hold them all in their darkest moments and bring comfort, strength, and peace upon them. We will now take a moment and in the silence, bring before you, Lord, our own personal concerns. We pray, Father, in the face of all life's uncertainties, sorrows, hurts, disappointments, and failures, we ask the assurance of Christ's presence, power, and love may give us strength, hope, and faith. Lord, you hear all our prayers, spoken and unspoken. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is Shine, Jesus, Shine.
go in peace as faithful servants of the Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. If we can just finish by saying the grace to each other. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.